Morning, Mr. Depp. Morning, Mr. Rodenborn. Yes, uh, two days ago, when you first took the stand, you discussed your upbringing and some of the abuse that you suffered at the hands of your mother. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. And you testified how she abused you physically, right? Yes, sir. Throwing things at you, hitting you. Yeah, there was quite a, yeah, very various forms of uh, physical abuse. And she abused you verbally by insulting you and your siblings, right? Yes, she did. And you testified that sometimes that that verbal abuse, that emotional abuse was worse than the beatings, right? Do you remember that? As a child, it, um, it um, has more of an opportunity to plant itself in your head. Sure. Yes. So you'd agree that abuse can take many forms. It can be physical, can be verbal, can be emotional, right? Indeed. And you, you testified that your dad wasn't abusive, but that you saw him punch walls when he was in an argument with your mother sometimes, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I, I witnessed my father, the, the only um, reaction that would be called a physical reaction from uh, the abuse he was uh, very stoically taking uh, from my mother. Um, I saw him maybe twice, three times, uh, punch a wall once, as I said, once he punched the corner of the wall and I watched his hand, uh, hands a hand, basically you shatter. Right. It, uh Mr. Depp, your walls weren't the only thing that your father punched, were they? In fact, once he, he punched you in the face and knocked you down, didn't he? Um, he, yes, when I was um, 15 years old, this was, uh, this was just before I had uh, uh, dropped out of uh, high school. One morning, yes, uh, in my mind, I was done with school. Uh, so he had asked me to, I believe it was something, it was very, he asked me to uh, take the dog for a walk or something, or take out the garbage, something menial, something strange. And, and uh, I just said, uh, no. And he, uh, and he gave me a, he just gave me a quick shot, um, pretty hefty. And it, it yeah, it, it, uh, it rattled my head, it rattled the cage, you know, sure. the birds and stuff, sure. So the, the jury hadn't heard about that before. When, when he punched you in the face, it actually knocked you to the ground. And then when you got up, you were all too happy to take care of what he wanted you to take care of, right? I was excited to take care of it at that right. point. And yesterday, um, I believe that you testified, why would you hit someone to make them agree with you? It doesn't work. You gave that testimony yesterday, didn't you? Yes. Now, you try to conduct yourself as a gentleman, right? Yes, sir. And you think that you live up to the standards of a Southern gentleman, right? Um, that was essentially, you know, when you have deep, deep roots in the South and Kentucky and such, um, it's not just your, your parents, your father, your mother, your, it's your grandparents, it's your uncles, it's your aunts, it's this, it's that, it, it's a, it, a, yes, raised to be a southern gentleman, that is to say, when chivalry was uh, still alive and allowed. Right, and, and you think you live up to the standards of a southern gentleman, correct? I believe I do, I certainly... I've done my best all my life. Paul Bettany's a good friend that you've done drugs with, right? That's a strange question. Um, Paul Bettany is a good friend, yes. You've done drugs with him? Yes, I have. Cocaine, right? Uh, cocaine, yes. Alcohol? Alcohol, yes. Pills, including Xanax and Adderall, right? Mm. that I'm not so sure of. Okay. Um, Where is 
he gone? Your Honor, may we approach? Um, right. I just want to discuss one thing with you. Okay. Miss Myers. It's time for a sidebar. Um, the just beginning, the first couple punches, Josh Schiffer, uh, being thrown. This is going to be a, a, a long day, is it not? Yeah, it's absolutely going to be long. There's a lot of worry and concern from the defense about how this first impression comes out. There's risk if the defense comes out and turns off the juror, abuses a witness, it can really set the tone for the rest of that trial. So they've got to walk very carefully into how the relationship of questioning with Mr. Depp uh, begins. They don't want to turn people off, but at the same time, they need to set the stage for the rest of what's going to be at least one, if not two or more, detailed, thorough, and exhausting days. And Ben Rottenborg um, is um, he, he's a fantastic litigator. Johnny Depp has proven to be a fantastic witness. And here they go, mano a mano. Let's go back in live. Mr. Depp, you, you remember giving testimony in um, the trial in the UK, correct? Yes. And you gave that testimony under oath, right? Yes. Um, you, were, you, were, you gave quite a bit of testimony in that trial, right? I, I wouldn't be able to judge that myself. I don't, it felt like a lot. OK, well, let's take a look at some of it. If you can turn to page 45, please, in front of you. It's, it's page um, 12 of the document. There's four transcript pages. Oh, I see page 12 page. of the document, certainly. Yes, sir. Oops. Yes, sir. And 12 of the document, you say? Yes, it, okay. in the lower left corner, there's a page 45. Do you see that? Yes, I do. OK. Um, and you see that uh, on, on the bottom of that page, um, there's a discussion of, of Paul Bettany and, and the things, drugs that you did together. And there was a question. The question is, any sort of pills? And your answer is yes. There could have been Xanax, or if he needed, if he asked for Xanax or Adderall, whatever, I would, of course, give it to him. Question, so you would supply Paul Bettany with whatever medication or controlled drugs he asked for. Is that right? Answer, if he was feeling anxious or if he was feeling unpleasant, I would give him what he asked for. Question, would you give him a Xanax? Answer, yes. Did I read that right? You certainly did, yes, sir. And you shared. Um, the two of you shared an enjoyment of controlled drugs or alcohol at that time, right? Um, the two of us were making a film uh, together. Um, with, with respect, sir, that, that wasn't my question. My question was the oh. two of you shared an, an enjoyment of controlled drugs and alcohol at that time. Yes or no? At times. Yes. And Ms. Hurd was quite adamant that you didn't drink anymore and that you should stop using recreational drugs, right? Oh, yes. And she didn't like it when you were high on drugs or drunk on alcohol, right? She didn't like it when it was her perception that I was high on drugs. Okay. Her perception is quite different than the truth. And, and that's, that's what we're after is the truth. Let's turn to, yes, uh, can you pull up exhibit 178, please, Michelle? Is that Defendant's 178 or? Yes, Your Honor. I'm okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure. Oh, let's see. Mr. Depp. Um, Objection, Your Honor. All right. Can Hi. we approach, please? Okay, sure. All right, sidebar, get a break. More testimony when we return. Don't go anywhere. We're just getting started. All right, 
know better. Welcome back. Sidebar is over. Let's pick it up uh, as soon as the sidebar concluded just a minute ago. Here we go. Mr. Depp, this, this is a text message exchange that you had with Paul Bettany on June 11th, 2013, correct? Yes, correct. Your Honor, permission to uh, move for admission of redacted defendants exhibit 178 and permission to publish, please. We, we, based off of your honor's ruling. All right. That's fine. 178 with redactions. Michelle, could you please blow up the first text at the top? In this text, Mr. Depp, you text Mr. Bettany, let's burn Amber, three excla exclamation points, right? You see that? I do see that. And at this time, June 11, 2013, Amber is your girlfriend or, or perhaps even your fiance at this point, correct? Uh, yeah. Girlfriend, yeah. for sure. And, and, and you didn't stop when you said, let's burn Amber. Because the, the next text down, you can move down and blow up the next text, please, Michelle. You say, let's drown her before we burn her. Three exclamation points. Did I read that right? Uh, yes, it's referring and, and, to the and text you didn't, prior to. You, you didn't stop when you said, let's drown her before we burn her. After that, you made another comment. And, and I'd like to apologize to the court and to the jury for some of the language that I'm going to have to use today. But unfortunately, um, you're going to see a lot of documents with language like this. After you said, let's drown her before we burn her. That's what you said that you would do after you burned her and after you drowned her. Did I read that right? You certainly did, yes. And you wrote that about the woman who would later become your wife. Yes, I did. Okay. Can you pull up exhibit 245, please? Your Honor, there's been um, no objection to this exhibit, and so I'd move for its admission and ask for permission to publish to the jury. Give them a moment to... Um, Your Honor, I, we have no objection to the portions that have Mr. Depp's text messages, but at the bottom portion, there is some from his daughter that we would ask be redacted. Okay. The last two. And Your Honor, I, it, that's okay, but there's no, there was no objection to this I on the ex but, exhibit list. But they don't appear to be relevant, which... That's fine. We're happy to redact those. So 245 in evidence with the redactions. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Depp, um, this, uh, the, the top text message, we're going to focus on a couple of these, but the top text message is a text from you to Paul Bettany on May 30th, 2014, correct? Might need to scroll over, Michelle. May 30th, 2014, yes. Yeah. And, and you recall that... Um, you testified yesterday about the flight that you took from Boston to Los Angeles on May 24th, 2014, right? Yes. You remember that? Okay. Yes, I did. And you testified yesterday that you didn't have any drinks before that flight, or maybe you had a glass of champagne or something. Remember giving that testimony? Yes, I believe I said I had a, a, a glass of champagne on the, on the plane. Right. So in this text, if you could blow up, Michelle, please, that top text. On May 30th, 2014, you texted Mr. Bettany, just a little bit smaller. 
You texted Mr. Bettany, I'm going to properly stop the booze thing, darling. Drank all night before I picked Amber up to fly to L.A. this past Sunday. Ugly, mate. No food for days. Powders. Half a bottle of whiskey. A thousand Red Bull and vodkas. Pills. Two bottles of champers on plane. And what do you get? my rage at the one I love for little reason as well I'm too old to be that guy but pills are fine did I read that right yes she did and when you said pills are fine this was when you were just starting treatment with dr. Kipper to try to get off of the pills that you testified about yesterday right uh, this is when I was still on the uh, uh, roxycodone it was before the um detox on the island, yes. Right, and you testified that when you were in Boston filming Black Mass, where, which you flew from, from Boston to L.A., that you had just retained Dr. Kipper to help you try to combat that pill problem, right? Yes. Okay. Could you go two texts down, please, Michelle? And this is a text that you sent on June 8, 2014, just scroll over, to Patty Smith. You see that? Yes, I do. Okay. And in this text, I, I, I won't read all of it, but you say this. My dar I'm going to just read the first paragraph. My darling Patty Lee, I miss you and worship you, and there is nothing wrong between us. Never, ever could that happen. I've just been so beyond busy with film here in Boston and then back to L.A. for kiddies. When I was in NYC, they were... ...3.30 a.m. the last time I was there, unable to stop he tears. Did I read that right? You did. Michelle, can you please take that down and let's pull up. Exhibit 325, please. Mr. Depp, is this a text message exchange that you had with Ms. Hurd on December 18th? 2014. I see that. Your Honor, I would um, move for admission of this exhibit and ask for permission to publish. All right, any objection? May um, I have a look at the... Um, of course. You look at the Your Honor, may we approach real quick? Okay, sure. Okay, to the sidebar, the punches, are they landing? Oof, we'll have more right after this. Stay with us. Subguilt.com today. Welcome back. Perfect timing. An extended sidebar has broken up more. Cross-examination to Johnny Depp. Let's go. On December 18th, 2014, you sent this text to Miss Heard. Um, and I'm going to read it. And it says, it's a way. I've let it go. Went too far. We slash I tend to do that. I always regret it when I jump or worse, when you jump. I don't want to be conditioned to continue that behavior. Therefore, I'll put in heavy work with shrink. I'm sorry for being less, for your disappointment in me. For my gotta lose that, gonna lose that. The devil is all around, right? I wish I were able to bring even just a glimmer of a smile to the pretty face of my most gorgeous of dreams and darkest nightmares. I love you far too much for you and I to be these heinous, slinging insults like we do slash did. 
It is not anything that I am particularly proud of to have participated in, and I regret giving it life. Right. I am well aware that I should have been bigger than the moment and that it will never again manifest in negative experiences. It can be done. What a killer concept to visualize. Wish you were in this lunatic's proximity. Be careful out there. I adore you. Did I read that right? You did. You can take that down, Michelle. If you could please pull up exhibit 153. And let's pull up the Your Honor, we have a redacted version of this, but we'll put up the fully unredacted um, right now. All right. Just give counsel a moment to review. Of course. Uh, Your Honor, this has phone numbers in it. so uh, I know. It yeah, yeah, I know. Just we understood. Just so you can see it first. Okay. I have the photo. You don't take pictures of what's on their screens. I'm not. Okay, I'm just making sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Mr. Depp, um, I, I'd like to, to, to turn your attention to the top three text messages on this page. These are text messages that you sent on January 17th, 2013. You see that? I'm sorry, I'm just reading the uh, page. Right. And it, the way these text messages are produced, sometimes there's big date skips and they're they're kind of jumbled in so they're not all on the same chain no, so no, of course what i'm what i'm asking you about is just the top three certainly and those are texts that you wrote on january 17th 2013 correct yes sir your honor permission to publish just those top three texts with identifiers and the others redacted and, and move for admission of that redacted exhibit. Um, as long as it's not this version, that's fine. The version we'll, we'll put it. We'll put up on the screen what I propose to uh, admit as well, an exhibit. Well, let me see what you're going to put up on the screen okay. first. We have no objection to right, this no version, objection. Your Honor. All right, we'll it as redacted. Okay. Michelle, can you blow up the text boxes, please? On January 17th, 2013, Mr. Depp, you texted the following. For the idiot cow, Three exclamation points. Next text. Will do. Worry. And apologies again to the court and the jury for this language. And then you close by saying, did you did, sir. You can take that down, please. We talked a little bit about the term monster yesterday, correct? Yes, I've heard that word quite a lot, yes. Yeah, and you, you testified yesterday that you used that term to placate Amber, right? 
And you, I believe that you testified you, that it was the word that she clung to to describe what was in her mind, not yours. I, I wrote down what you said. Do you remember giving that testimony? Uh, the monster, more than anything, was uh, Ms. Hurd's way of referencing um, whether I was, whether she perceived that I was on substances or taking substances. So the word monster became, it, it represented for her uh, the consumption of, of uh alcohol or any other substances, um, whether it was actually happening or not, her perception. And so monster became her click word, right. if you will. But, but actually the term monster to describe yourself came from you. Well, initially Miss Heard, uh, I believe she started out with demons. Uh, she started out with a call, uh, saying that I had demons. And then when Monster was put into uh, a conversation, which, again, uh, my, my, I have a, a particular way of using uh, words, vocabulary uh, in, my, uh, in, in my vernacular. So M Monster uh, was something that if it which she s stuck with tried and true i mean she just stayed with that right but, um, but you'd but, have but to you, accept it came it from you the unless term came you from wanted you. to argue the term came from you didn't it uh it's very probable it's probably possible it's probable that i that i might have used that 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 word certainly it, it, right and, and and in 2012 in fact um elton john was one of your friends who was trying to help you get sober correct yes sir and you, th you, you sent him a message in 2012 where you thanked him for his help and you said, quote, I would have been swallowed up by the monster were it not for you. That is a simple fact. Isn't yes. that true? Yes. Again, the monster referring to alcohol and, and substances. Correct. And, and you didn't send that message to Miss Heard. You sent that to Elton John. I would have been swallowed up by the monster were it not for you. Um, Correct? Elton, Elton, uh, can you pull up his was, was a dear friend who um, has been uh, s s sober for, I don't know, 40 years, 30 years. So he was, um, we'd had discussions and he wanted to me to get, uh, clean, sober. Um, so he actually, Elton actually sent uh, a, a, a fellow called Charlie Dunnett, who's, who worked with Elton for years and years. And Mr. Depp, I, I appreciate that. My only question was just to confirm that you had sent that message to Elton John, nothing else. Thank you. So I'll just, okay, I'll yeah. just stop talking. Um, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I want to be Certainly respectful of the court's problem, time and the, and the jury's time. Um, Sorry? I just said I want to be respectful of the court's time and the jury's time, and I, I trust that you do too. So. Um, well, and, I don't feel you, like I'm wasting anyone's time, sir. Could you pull up Exhibit 408, please? Mr. Depp, I, I'd like to, to turn your attention to the bottom text on this page. Um, and can you confirm that this is a text message that you sent on April 9th 2015, while you were married to Amber, to your sister. Do you see that? Uh, the, the, the last... Uh, the last text on the, on the, the one bottom, on the bottom. Yes, yes I, I see that, yes. Okay. Um, your Honor, I'd move for admission of 408 with all the identifiers redacted and everything except the last text redacted. Last, just the last one. Yes, Your Honor. One text. Um, we object, Your Honor. We, uh, if we could approach just okay. very quickly. Another sidebar. Let's get a break in. Getting under Johnny Depp's skin a little bit is Attorney Rottenborg. More when we return. One. Call now.
sidebar has broken up. Let's get back into the courtroom and who it's getting a little heated. And Mr. Depp, um, to clarify, is sis in those texts? Is that is that your sister, um, or it, it could be Amber's sister too, right? One uh, or the other. Sis, I, I was referring to Whitney. Whitney. Earth. Okay, so Amber's sister. Okay. Yes, Amber's okay. sister. <clears throat> Your Honor, with those redactions, I'd ask for permission or move to admit Exhibit 408. No, no objection. Yes. Okay. All right, 408 at, with redactions as it. And Mr. Depp, um, on April 9th, 2015. Yes. While you were married to Miss Hurd, you texted someone named Sis, which may be her sister, you testified. Yes. You said, I'm all right. I dot 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 though I never ever want to lay eyes on that filthy embarrassing did I read that right yes you did and and when you called Amber yes sir let's pull up exhibit 4 427 um, unredacted please Mr. Depp, I would like to, um, I'd like to direct your attention um, Okay. Is there another, let's see. I'd like to direct your attention to the fourth text up from the bottom. Four from the bottom. Chat number 1616. Hmm. You see that? Yes, I do. Um, and that's a text message exchange between you and Jerry Judge on April 26th, 2015, just a couple of weeks after you referred. Yes, I do. Sir. Okay. Your Honor, permission to, to um, and move for admission of this exhibit with the, um, the two text exchanges um, in that chat between him and Jerry Judge. All right, well, why don't you show me what it would look like redacted? Um, okay. Can we do that? Okay, sure. Before it's just those two, it. Michelle. He's having trouble with the sound. The sound. Any objection to 427? No objection. With Your redactions? Honor. Okay. 427 with redactions. Thank you, Your Honor. And if you can just blow the text text up, Michelle, of both of those. Mr. Depp, on April 26, 2015, Jerry Judge, and Jerry Judge is your former security guy who, who passed away a couple of years ago, right? That's okay. correct. Um, and he writes you and says, hi boss, just wanted to say if you and Amber need anything, just let me know. I will be there in 20 minutes. Johnny, it is lovely to see how you and Amber are so happy. The other day watching the two of you sitting on the bench by the sea was fantastic. The two of you need happiness and it is really great to see that. Love to you and Amber, XOXO, Jerry. Did I read that right? You did. Okay. And beneath that, you texted him back and you said, Thank you, my dear Jerry. Very, very kind, mate. We've been perfect. 
All I had to do was send the monster away and lock him up. We've been happier than ever. All caps. Love you, brother. JD. Did I read that right? You did, sir. Michelle, could you please pull up Exhibit 445, Defendants? And in the text that we just saw, when you were used the word monster, that Miss Heard wasn't on that text message, was she? No, that was between Jerry and myself. Okay, thank you. Mr. Depp, I'd like to direct your attention in this message to the second text down, yes. which is a text from you to Dr. Kipper, Dr. David Kipper, on June 28th, 2015. Okay. Is that right? Um, I, yes, 26, 28, 215, yes. Okay. Your Honor, um, I'd move for the admission of a redacted exhibit with that, simply that text. We're happy to redact the rest of it. Is that text 139 or 137? 137, Your 137. Honor, I'm sorry. 137. Uh, no objection with All the right, proper redactions. Get those redactions before we publish, or did you want to publish these? Um, we, we'll just, we'll make the redactions right now and then okay. um, publish that. Okay. Thank you. All right, 440, 445 as redacted. Yes, Your Honor. All right, in evidence. Thank you. And you sent this text on June 28th, 2015, and it said, if you can blow up the text, Michelle, please. Thank you, my darling Kipper. All those technical abbreviations left me flummoxed and in the dark. Soon, soon, I must see you and just hang out. My deformed finger and I have no friends. By the way, Amber and I have been absolutely monster child away in a cage. To you, my brother, JD. Did I read that right? Yes, you did. And Amber wasn't on that text when you told Dr. Kipper that you had locked your monster child away in a cage deep within, was she? Uh, no, no. Can we pull up um, Exhibit 435, please, unredacted? <laughs> Just the bottom text that I'm going to direct your attention to, Mr. Depp. This is a text that you sent to Stephen Duders on May 14th, 2015, right? The last one. Yep. May 14th. And Stephen Duders is your personal assistant, or was your personal assistant at the time you were with Miss Hurd, right? Yes, he's now my partner. And okay. Now he's the, the, the president of the European um, branch of Infinitum Nile, right? I am too, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, move for admission of uh, a redacted version of this document with just the bottom text, Your Honor. No objection. All right, if you could just redact it just to the bottom text. Thank you, Judge. Four thirty-five in evidence as redacted. And on May fourteenth, twenty fifteen, you blow up that text, Michelle, please. You texted Mr. Duders, need to discuss the news helicopters hovering outside the house this morning. The monster is not involved, correct? That's, I see that, yes. And Miss Hurd wasn't on that text, was she? No. Let's pull up exhibit 196, please.
This is on page two, please. Are we on, are we on page two? Yeah, so it's, Mr. Depp, I'd like to direct your attention to um, line 24, you can see in that left-hand column there. And this is a text message from you to Stephen Duders, your, your personal assistant at the time, on October 31st, 2013, correct? Yes, sir. Um, permission to publish or move for admission, Your Honor, of this, just this page of the exhibit. All right, what's this text going to say? We'll find out. Right after this break, need to step aside as we approach the top of the hour. You won't miss a thing. We'll pick it up right where we left off. Stay with us. This is Court TV, your front row seat to justice. Free for 30 days. I just said I want to be respectful of the court's time and the jury's time, and I, I trust that you do too. So, um, well, I don't feel you... that I'm wasting anyone's time. Welcome back. Top of the hour. Glad you're with us on Court TV as Johnny Depp continues to endure cross-examination from the attorney representing Amber Heard. Let's get you back into the courtroom exactly where we left off. Uh, with the phone numbers redacted, we have okay. no objections. Of course. You could do those redactions, so it would just be page two of exhibit 196. Yes, Your Honor. Are you ever going to enter any other pages of this exhibit into evidence? I'd like to reserve the right to Then we'll call this 196A. Okay, okay, thank you. This makes it easier for the record. All right, thank you. Okay. Permission to publish, Your Honor? All right, 196A in evidence as redacted. And in this text message from you to Mr. Duders on October 31st, 2013, you write, thanks. She thinks that my Peruvian period has made me a monster and that I am ruining the relationship. You see that? Yes, I do, sir. The Peruvian period is a reference to cocaine, is it not? Yes, it is. I'm sorry, you said yes, it is? Yes, it is, yeah. Okay. Let's go to exhibit 293, please. Mr. Depp, I'd like to direct your attention to the bottom uh, text, which is a text from you to an unknown number on October 4th, 2014. Do you see that? The last one? Yes. You said, yes, I see that. Yes, sir. Your Honor, I'd, I'd move uh, for the admission of modified Exhibit 293 with um, just that uh, redacted version. Um, and we, we may use other parts of it, so I'd, I'd ask it to be 293A or 1. Okay. We can make it A. Let's okay. keep consistent. After All right. I forgot a. what you had said. No objection. All right, honest. 293A, we'll get the redactions done. All right, 293, maybe. There we go. All right, Act 293A in evidence with redactions. Thank you, Your Honor. And in this text message on October 4th, 2014, you text someone, it's, it's unclear who, uh, you say, I am going to quite gracefully glide into a massage of my broken back and neck. I shall exit in one hour a monster. Shall we each swallow and E each, parentheses, or perhaps it's MDMA, at around 8 p.m., and go to dinner with a few of my WE team at a wonderful Peruvian spot. Let us enjoy this night, my brother. Let us reward ourselves for the hard work and misery of the heat that we push ourselves to. Did I read that right? You did. You did. And, and, E here, that's a reference to ecstasy, correct? It is. Okay. You can take that down, Michelle, please. 
You would agree that you found drugs and alcohol at an early stage in your life, right? I, I, I've certainly, yes, I did. And, and you testified uh, a couple days ago that you had done just about every kind of drug there was by age 13 or 14, right? 15. 15. And you've um, you found that drugs are the only way to numb your pain, right? They've always been um, a medicine for me, yes, a numbing agent. And you said yesterday that, in fact, I, I think you said you take drugs to numb the demons, right? I don't know that I said to numb the demons, but I have, well, if I did say demons, it's, it is to numb the residual um, pain that I carry from my uh, youth. Right. And um, one, of, one of your good friends that you've taken drugs with before is Marilyn Manson, right? Um, yes, we've taken, uh, 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 we've drank together. Uh, we've, we've, uh, we've had cocaine together maybe a couple of times. Um, pills, right? With Marilyn Manson? Um, I once gave uh, Marilyn Manson a pill uh, so that he would s stop talking so much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, I get it. Uh, you employ, you employ a, a lot of people that work for you, right? I employ a lot of people. That you employ a lot of people that serve various roles in your life, right? Yes, there's, there, there, yes. And, and, and at least some of those people will do anything you ask, including some of them supplying controlled drugs to you, correct? I would not characterize those people as doing anything I want or anything I said. They're not the yes men that you'd like them to be. Can you turn, uh, pick up your, uh, your testimony from the UK trial and turn to page uh, 48, which is page 13 of the document, please? Yes, sir. I've got it. You got it? Okay. Yes, sir. And if you could please take a look at um, page 48, line 15. Page 48, line 15. Yeah. You just testified that they're not yes men, right? That was the testimony you just gave, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. On page 48, line 15, um, uh, of your testimony in the UK, you were asked the question, they are people who will do what you ask. They will do anything you ask, including some of them supplying drugs to you, controlled drugs to you. Your answer was, there are people who work for me, work with me, who, yes, in the past, have been asked to provide whatever I have felt was necessary at the time. Question, well, putting it bluntly, if you wanted illegal drugs, controlled drugs, and you asked one of your staff, and I'm not going to name anybody particularly right now, that member of staff would provide you with those drugs if he could. Answer, at times, yes. Question, despite the fact that it was illegal? Answer, yes. Did I read that right? You did. Can we pull up uh, exhibit 1085, please? You've seen this picture before, Mr. Depp, right? Uh, 
Uh, yes, I have. Yes. Um, and this is a picture that was taken in uh, Ms. Hurd's um, former house or apartment on Orange Avenue after you two began dating, correct? Yes, sir, and it's, uh, it's quite a composition. It, the composition of the photograph is very interesting. I, I, I think that's something we can agree on. Um, Your Honor, move for admission of Exhibit 1085 and ask for permission no to No objection, Your Honor. All right, 1085, published and in evidence. And this picture, um, you recall, Mr. Depp, was taken in, in or around March of 2013 after you had fallen off the wagon, right? Um, I'm sorry, what date? March of 2013, I believe, March right? March 2013. Does that ring a bell? Um, if March 23rd, um, I had... Uh, Fallen off the wagon from when we were when I was doing Lone Ranger when Mr. <coughs> was, was with me when I was uh, sober. Okay, um, but that was those the whiskey um, that's on the table was that was an average. Every day I would come home to her place and there would be a glass of whiskey waiting for me. And and you would sometimes drink whiskey in the mornings too, right? During this time period. Um, I. I, I I, you know, I mean, isn't happy hour any time? <laughs> and that cocaine, that those white lines, those are cocaine. That's cocaine, right? I would assume. It yeah, and like that's it. that's your cocaine that you kept in that box that says property of JD with the skull and crossbones, isn't it? Well, the beautiful composition of the photograph would suggest that, certainly. Yeah, you don't dispute that. I, I, I don't see me in it. No, but you don't dispute that the, you carried cocaine in that box that said property of J.D. That was a special box that you carried cocaine in, wasn't it? The box was a gift from someone. I can't say that I carried cocaine in it, no. You, you, you can't it, say that you carried cocaine in that box? No, but it looks like it would fit some cocaine. I, I, I... <laughs> cocaine is, I would in my experience, normally uh, given in plastic bags. When you put it in a box like that, um, chances are very good you'll leave a trail of a, a long line of cocaine behind you okay. walking down the street. So, Why don't you go ahead and pull up your UK testimony, please? Let's look at page 202. 202. Oh, boy. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're going by those things. Uh, pardon me. It's page nine of the document. One, six, nine. Um... Oops, uh... I'm having trouble finding 202. Are you saying page nine oh, because there's no two? That, no, I, that's my fault. It's day two, so I owe you another transcript. I'm sorry. My apologies. Oh. We're moving into another day now. Thank you. Your Honor, permission to approach? Okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Yes, and I apologize for that, Mr. Depp. Um, this is uh, page nine of the document, uh, page 202 of the transcript. This was day two of your testimony in the UK. Uh, yes, I see it, page 202. Yep. And uh, on that, uh, on page 202, um, you were asked a question, we'll have to work out what that was at a later stage. Can you see in the front that there is a little box, about two inches by two inches, if we compare it to the size of the credit cards? Answer, yes. Property of JD with skull and crossbones on it. Yes, I do. That, I suggest, 
is, this is a question. That, I suggest, is your cocaine box. That is where you would keep your cocaine, a special box that you had. Answer, I do remember the box. Question, do you remember it now? Answer, yes. I did not remember the property of JD. Yes, that is a box. It was carrying cocaine in it. I would say I probably was then. You see that? Did uh, I read that right? Yes, you did. And on the morning that this picture was taken, you were, this was during the filming of a documentary about Keith Richards. You remember that? Um, uh, what's, what, um, I'm sorry, uh, Th this, uh, Yeah, sure. This picture was taken while you were filming a documentary about Keith Richards, correct? Uh, I'm sorry, the date again on this? Do you remember that? I believe, it was, I believe it was March 2013. But you could, you that should seems, know better yes, than I that do. seems about... Okay. And you see there's a Keith Richards CD, it looks like, above that cosmetic case? Perfectly placed, yes. Yeah. And you had an argument that morning in which you accused Amber of cheating on you. Do you remember that? Um, I believe Amber had an argument with me. And morning. you were using cocaine and drinking whiskey that morning, and as a result of that argument, you were late to the set of that documentary, correct? Um, in fact, I was not late to the documentary. Uh, well, I was late, but um, I had called... Uh, my crew, because it was a day of uh, filming performance with, between, it was Keith Richards, Tom Waits, and some other mm. very uh, talented musicians. Uh, the only thing that needed to be done in terms of performance was capture the performance. So uh, my, I, I wasn't needed on the set, so I could come in any time I wanted. Okay. okay, you just said that you were late, though, correct? Oh, so I was just late, testified yes. To. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. And, and due to the argument, of course. Sure. Yes. Um, I'd like to, to shift gears a little bit uh, now. Mm. Well, actually, let's, let's not. Um, Michelle, could you please pull up Exhibit 152? <clears throat> Mr. Depp, these are our various um, texts that you sent and received to various people um, in 2012. Do you see that? Uh, yes, seems to go from July to September. Right, right. And um, we'll, we'll take them kind of piece by piece, I, I guess. Um, I guess the first thing I'd like to do um, is take a look at uh, exhibits, or I'm sorry, the entries 1628. So that's about halfway down the page, it's a text exchange a text from you uh, to Stephen Duders, your personal assistant at the time, and then a text from him back to you. Ob objection, Your Honor. All right, sidebar, let's squeeze in a break here. More testimony, Johnny Depp being cross-examined after this. Stay with us. Welcome back. Sidebar is broken up. Let's go back right where we left off. Mr. Depp, um, we're going to take a look at two, two text messages here, the, or three text messages. Um, on August 4th, 2012, you exchanged text messages with Stephen Duders, one from you to him and one from him to you. Do you see that midway through the page? Yes. And, Michelle, can you blow those up, please? <clears throat> In those text messages, you write to Mr. Duders, your personal assistant, yay, where is the little baggie 
you built in LA. And he says, special baggie, I gave you can in 1480 kitchen. Not sure where it went after that. Thought I heard you say something along the lines of, I know what to do with it, exclamation point. Did I read that right? You did, sir. All right. Can you scroll down to the, the text on the bottom, please? This is a text, um, Mr. Depp, uh, where you say, I use marijuana a lot, three exclamation points. I take pot. I read that right, correct? Yes, you did. And, and this is a text that you sent on September 11th, 2012, to just scroll over to the left, Michelle. This is a text that you sent to Brian Warner. Now, Brian Warner's Marilyn Manson, right? That's correct, sir. Okay. Um, let's pull up Exhibit 145, please. Mr. Depp, this is a series of text messages um, from you to and from various people in 2012, right? Yes, sir. And, Your Honor, the, the uh, text messages that I'd like to uh, ask the witness about are the first two. Um, and then the... Um, Or just those first two. All right. We have no objection to the admission right. with proper redactions. Okay. You could redact just those first two. And I'd move for the admission of that right. document as redacted. Sure. As soon as we get it redacted. Thanks, Michelle. That's fine. No okay. objection. All right, 145 and evidence has redacted. Thank you, Your Honor. So this text exchange, Mr. Depp, between you and Marilyn Manson on uh, September 11th, 2012, you text him, the pill and the plant stuff keep me calm and detached. And he texts you back, I have lots of reefers many reefers and cookies, which are weird, but pot is funny, backwards gateway drug. Do you see that? I do, sir. Did I read that right? You did. All right. <clears throat> you can take that down, Michelle, please. And if you could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 108, sorry, one, 1089. 1089. Mr. Depp, I'd, I'd like to ask you about this photo. Um, this is a photo of four pretty huge bags of marijuana, correct? Yes, sir. That is a lot of marijuana. A lot of marijuana. Yes, sir. Um, and the coffee cup that's right next to that, that's, that's a coffee cup for your, your company, Infinitum Nile, right? That's correct. And the, the furniture, this is taken in one of your residences? Uh, it's taken in the studio, the recording studio. In the recording studio. Okay. Um, your Honor, per, uh, move for the admission of Exhibit 1089, Defendant's Exhibit 1089, and no. permission to publish. No objection, All right, Your Honor. 1089 evidence. You can publish. So this 
this picture of these four giant bags of, of pot, at least four, um, uh, was taken in your recording studio. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. You can, you can take that down, Michelle. Are you at a good break point, Mr. Rottenborn? Just uh, sure. I, we, the break would be fine. Okay. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Let's go ahead and take our morning recess at 15 minutes. Uh, so we just don't talk to anybody. Don't do any outside research. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You can be re released. Okay. There it is. The mid morning break. Um, we'll do this. Let's get a break in here, and then we have lots to talk about. Stay with us. Brought you by Web Bank. Member DIC. Court TV Live, our cameras are bringing you live coverage of actor Johnny Depp on the witness stand in Fairfax, Virginia. We're in the middle of his cross-examination. This is day two, but day one was pretty minor. Not too long. Today's going to be a full day, and we're getting the beginning parts of it. They're at a short mid-morning break right now. We'll take you live back into court as soon as everybody is back in court. Joining us in studio, criminal defense attorney Josh Schiffer watching along with us. So, the... Uh, Amber Heard's team is trying to establish that Johnny Depp's alter ego, the monster, is fueled by drug use. It's not breaking news that he's a drug user, but is it not important to make that connection that, okay, the guy uses a lot, he admits to using a lot of coke and this and that and the other. Uh, there was a big bag of weed that was shown uh, to the, a couple bags uh, shown to the jury just now. And, you know, it's a lot, of, it's a lot right? So the, they're proving it beyond a reasonable doubt. <clears throat> and he admits it, that he's a drug user. But does it mean he's an abuser? And, nope. and, and have they made that connection? I, I, that's the big question. And I think that the defense is struggling with the idea of painting with a broad brush and this is perfect testimony for the day after 420 also known as uh, surprise drug test day we're getting into drug use by someone who's a really high-end important celebrity who was basically catered to by a giant mechanical organization of yes men and yes women whose job it was was to make him happy all the time that included during parts of his life a lot of drugs I think that Mr. Depp did an okay job at admitting that part of his story and telling it. I would have liked to have seen a lot more. Um, but what it's not illustrating is the connection you're talking about. Using drugs doesn't make you an abuser, even though they could be connected. And I feel that as this cross-examination continues, hopefully Ms. Hurd's attorneys are going to be able to illustrate that connection clearly. Yeah, we see everybody standing in the courtroom, the jury making their way back in. Uh, and we, we've caught up. Basically, we had a couple of delays because of the commercial. You haven't missed anything. So this is live. Uh, they're getting ready for the continuation of Johnny Depp on the stand for cross-examination. Let's go back in live. Mr. Depp, um, contrary to what maybe we've heard, the jury's heard earlier in this trial, you became aware many times over the course of your life about your sister Christie's concerns about your drug consumption, correct? Over many times in my life? Yes. Um, I, I think you'd have to ask her that. I'm not, I'm not aware that she was concerned for the period of my life. No. Well, in fact, your sister's had a number of worries about your drug consumption over many, many years since your youth that you've become aware of, correct? Uh, in, in my youth, I Since don't your know. youth, sorry. Hmm? S since your youth. S since my youth, my, my sister has not been um, necessarily privy to uh, every single let's say, move that I've made, whether it be where you'd like me to go with the, the drug um, dependency or whatever. Um, she's been a concerned sister in every way, that even having to do with uh, relationships that I was in that she was quite worried about. 
Right, right. And I wasn't asking about relationships. What I was asking no, is... No, I was just... It, it, let, let's do it this way, given right. your testimony. Let's, let's turn to uh, day two of the UK trial, the transcript that's in front of you, please. Uh, day two. So where would you like me to... Page 279. Uh, it's on page 28 of the document, please. It's upper right. Thank you. Page 279, that was. Y yes, sir. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and on line 11, are you there? Do you have the document up? On, online? No, I'm sorry. Is it in your hand? Okay, great. Yes. Uh, on page, uh, or uh, line 11 of page 279, you were asked a question. Question, did your sister express anxiety to you about your drug intake at around this time? Your answer... My sister Christy has over many, many years, since my youth, had a number of worries about my consumption growing up. Yes, she talked, to be, she talked to me many times over the course of my life, and yes, with Ms. Hurd, we did speak about it. I think she and Ms. Hurd's ability to speak to one another stopped not long after this. Did I read that right? You did, sir. When you first started seeing Amber, you had... Um, you, you filmed the rum diary, but then you went a couple years without being involved, and then you, you saw each other on the press tour for the movie, right? That's correct. And when you first started seeing her after that couple year um, uh, period of not seeing her, you had just been checked out of a New York hospital um, where you had been for a couple days to fight alcohol use, correct? Um, yes. And you were drinking... Uh, you were you were abusing alcohol toward the end of your relationship with your prior partner, Vanessa Parody, correct? I was drinking. You were drinking pretty heavily. Were you there? It's my question to you, sir. No, I wasn't drinking that let's, heavily. What we can, I mean, I, let's turn to the U UK. It's one definition. 16, please. What you define as heavily, sir. Let's just look at what you said before. Let's go to Soon. page 116 of the UK transcript, please. This would be in day one. 116. Yes, sir. 116 it was, yes. Yeah, 116 um, down onto 117. Okay. Um, on 116, line 18, the question is, I think one of the problems in that relationship was your alcohol and drug addiction, misuse, if you prefer that word. Answer, I would definitely say towards the end of my relationship with Miss Parody, the mother of my children, it was a very painful time to break up with someone that you have been with for 14 years and that you have two children with. So it was a very painful time, and I was more than likely trying to numb myself as much as possible. Question, am I right in saying that you agree that you were abusing alcohol and drugs, but you have explained why? Answer, I would say that I was abusing alcohol. I do not know that I was abusing drugs, but I was abusing alcohol for sure. Yes. Did I read that right? You did. And there was a time in the early stages of your relationship with Amber when you explained to her that you weren't drinking alcohol at that time because you had a problem with your liver, correct? Um, y y yes, there was, uh, 
Yeah, I, there was a, there was concern over the uh, the numbers, uh, as they call it, over my uh, the, about my liver. Um, and you shared that with Amber, right? Yes, I did. And Amber, early on in your relationship, throughout your relationship, she didn't love the fact that you were drinking and using drugs. Correct? You've testified to that many times. Objection right? calls for speculation as to what Ms. is in Ms. Heard's mind. I'll sustain this to that point sure. if you want to rephrase. You understood that Ms. Heard was not happy with you overusing alcohol or, or overusing drugs, correct? Um, from the very beginning? Yeah, she was trying to be supportive of your sobriety, correct? N no, sir. No. Okay. Let's look at Exhibit 182, please. Are we in day two now? Or is this... No, this, sorry. This, this, is a, this is an exhibit. Oh, I see. Yeah, you can set that, that to the side, sir. Thank you. This is an email um, from Exchange from you, um, between you and Elton John in 2013, July 2013. Correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and the second email down is an email that you sent to Elton John uh, at 5.05 in the afternoon on July 13th, 2013. You see that? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, uh, move for the admission of Exhibit 182 and permission to publish. I assume there's redactions that need to be done. But... Yes, Your Honor, there's some email addresses in here, and I would ask that the portions that are not Mr. Depp's also be redacted as well. All right. That's fine. Okay, so no objection with those redactions, is that correct? Okay. Let's just get those redactions. Just one page. Yes. All right. In, in I believe that covers the redactions, Your Honor. May I just sure. have a moment to read? Absolutely. Of course. Okay. All right, let's get a break in here as they uh, obviously redact Elton John's email address so we can't see it. Back with more after this. E15. Uh, what did uh, Johnny Depp and Elton John chat about via email? Well, the redactions have been redacted. Let's go back in right where we left off. This is, this is an email that you sent to Elton John, July 13th, 2013. And Michelle, could you scroll down to the third paragraph up from the bottom that starts with the words on the other side of the coin? And, and in that paragraph, you write... On the other side of the coin, my kids have fallen head over heels in deep love with Amber, my girl. And that pressure. Brainwashed them against her, which I'm sure is imminent. I, I, I read that right, didn't I? You did read that very well. And the. Uh, when you refer to the French extortionist, Vanessa Parody, the mother of your children, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Things got a little um, you uh, can tight take that down. at that point between us, as they would. Can you pull up Exhibit 214, please? Defendant's Exhibit 214. Mr. Depp, portions of this, we've already seen portions of this, uh, of this exhibit. Um, what I, I, I'm going to ask you about are the top three messages. These are messages um, to and from your daughter, Lily Rose, 
uh, I believe, on February 4th, 2014, correct? I'm, uh, we object, Your Honor. These are communications. We object to the admission of any communications from his daughter. What's the legal objection? Uh, a hearsay. Uh, right. I, to, to, first of all, I was just asking him if, if, if that was if, what it was. But um, may we approach? OK. Sidebar, Josh Schiffer watching along with us. Oh, Elton John. I'm uh, <laughs> it's I'm, riveting, isn't it? I'm All telling you, Ted, th this has <laughs> this has every boxes of cocaine. We got Elton John's email getting redacted because before it gets inadvertently published to all of America, which is watching this trial. My social media is just exploding. No one expected it to quite go this deeply into some of these issues. And as you and I have talked about, one of the big questions is, what is Johnny running from? Is he running from anything? And whether he should just own some of this story? What about the, the language? I mean, the, we have to bleep it out so our viewers don't know the words that are being used, but just know that it's that really, really, really bad one that keeps coming up. Yeah. Um, and does that have an effect? Or is that all part and parcel to, OK, he's this movie star who's a drug user and he uses salty language, he's Captain Jack Sparrow. I think it fits into the overall narrative. We have our public persona and then we have our private and intimate and family persona and guess what? People use uh, really purient language and that, as you said, that's about as bad language as you get. I can say a lot of stuff in front of my mom but there are certain lines that will result <laughs> in a firm slap across the face and that got tossed around a bit. I don't think the jury gets upset about it. I think it intrigues them and they might look down upon him because there are certain ways you don't refer to anyone like, uh, especially someone that you had an intimate relationship with. The line has been crossed. He's used it now for, um, you know, the, and the point from, the, from Amber Heard's team is like, look, he said it about his other ex-wife. Now he's saying it about, does that, could that possibly help him because you know, he's, <laughs> that's just, he, as he keeps bringing it up, my vernacular yeah. is a little bit different. And it, it, so can he kind of twist that? Is it point scoring? Yeah, man, you might be able to score a couple points by showing that the guy uses bad words and really treats people poorly. And women. And women, specifically women. And there may be a misogynistic theme that develops. In fact, the lack of theme right now is a big question that myself and a lot of other people are thinking about because there hasn't been a specific overarching theme other than let's show everybody in America a bunch of embarrassing messages that are tasteless and wrong. And I'm sure if you asked him, he would say, I feel really awful about saying that. But it's very human of him. And it's really authentic that these are things that he wrote during the time, there's a lot of passion, there's a lot of anger. He's not excusing it. He's not running from it the way a lot of people would. Uh, so I think right now in this battle of two brilliant and sophisticated people, it's kind of an even draw. What do you think of the Marilyn Manson? They've used the opportunity a couple of times to bring Marilyn Manson into this, and he, of course, is fighting his own legal trouble having uh, accusations against him from uh, a female. Is that lost on the jury, picked up on the jury? Uh, can you take offense on the jury? Do you, because it's a, obviously strategy at its best. Yeah. Um, it, you know, I think, I think that the uh, lawyers are hoping the jurors who are allowed to bring in all of their life's experience have independent knowledge of what's going on with Marilyn Manson and, the same, and those kind of allegations being made against them. I think it's a little bit exploitative. Hey, famous person has other famous friends, but I don't think it shocks anybody that incredibly highly paid, popular, surrounded by sycophant entertainers have access to all kinds of crazy party drugs and used them and had what many people would call a great time. And there are country songs written about what happens when you get rich and famous like this. And these gentlemen, they pursued some of those activities. I'm not right or wrong, right. but yeah. don't run from it. And then the, the big question, of course, is can you put the monster alter ego fueled by drugs into an abuser and that's what uh, Johnny Depp team says is not true and that he has the history of uh, of actually being a placid drug using trash talking Captain Jackie guy um, 
We'll have to wait and see. We're going to slip in a break here. They're back at it, and they will be soon. When we come back, we'll get you back into the courtroom. Stick around. This is Court TV, your front row seat to justice, students.